Hi, I'm Dave Watson and I'm the designer and the creator of Theme Park Station. In this video, I'll be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide as to how I weathered the inspection pits at the TMD side of the layout. I'll be using the airbrush along with different tones of enamel paints to create a mucky, worn and grimy effect. Hope you enjoy. Any questions, just ask. Before you watch the video, I'll give you a little insight into the Dean Park office here. This is where I do all my design work and the kit building and all my scratch building. For example, I've got the TMD office on the table just now along with its windows. I've got the hard standing for the, the TMD which will be shortly going up to the loft for installation. I've got some port of cabins, some really boxes, some fueling areas and even behind the camera I've got some scale model scenery kits gluing up so there's always something on the go. I like to keep two or three jobs on the go um, so when I get stuck with one whether it's drying or waiting to um, you know make the next part I can always go and do something else. It, it keeps it uh, with a bit of variety as well stops me getting bogged down and bored with the one project. What I've been doing just now is I've been applying some sleeper grime through an airbrush to the track sides. This is only in the areas where the hard standing will be. Now you could argue what's the point if the hard standing is going to be covering them. However, there might be a slight gap between the edge of the rail and the hard standing and I didn't want unrealistic shiny rail showing through. I'll also be adding dirty washes and grimes onto that rail side. So really the sleeper grime just basically acts as a base coat for this particular area. I usually ballast before I weather. I find that easier because then you're applying the weathering to the ballast as well as the track which makes it more realistic. However in this case there's not going to be any ballast where the hard standing is so that's why I'm doing it in kind of a reverse order. You can see at the far right of the screen there the one that's not been treated as opposed to the track that has been treated I'll take you through a short sequence just now to show you how to do the last little stretch of this area. It's very simple, light passes over the sides of the rails at quite a close range with an airbrush. I've got it about 20 psi pressure with enamel thinned down rail match sleeper grip. Of course those of you who have not got an airbrush might want to hand paint it with the same enamels or acrylics. Obviously acrylics got a quicker drying time so you can build up the, the coats if required. The paint brushing method doesn't give you the ability to, to feather in different colours as easily as an airbrush which I'll show you as I do the, the um, hard standing areas and the inspection pits. The third option is a pen and use a kind of rail pen to take off the shininess of the, the bare nickel silver track. I tend to find that's a bit um, of a faff. Um, I struggle to get the, an even coat on there and some of the rail still shines through. But as I said, there's more than one way to do it. Find a way that's comfortable for you and um, practice until you've nailed it and then apply it to your layout.
Weathering the tracks in the inspection pit area is very much the same as doing it on the other tracks. It's sleeper grime with um, an airbrush and you'll see here what I've got is a bit, a bit of card and what I'm doing is if I'm doing this rail um, here at the front I'm masking off behind so I'm not getting any overspray into the pit just now I'm wanting to weather that with different tones as well as the rail sides obviously so I'm trying to mask off so just use it as a kind of a little bit of card you can see where the overspray there is just to kind of cover the area while I'm doing it and I work my way back and then hit the other side of the rails as well sleeper grime as you saw in the sequence there then I put on some Humbrol 32 dark grey mixed with some precision paints weathered concrete with some 62 a kind of browny tan colour to get a kind of mucky grey the same as I did on my hard standing area and I kind of feathered it in, in different areas and I've got the inspection lights on at the moment without the spotlight on if I put the inspection lights off I put the spotlight on I try and get a little bit closer you'll see that I've used varying tones of grey especially around the the drain areas where the obviously the muck will accumulate and then drain away um, darkened in slightly I've got the, the sleeper grime kind of feathered in with dark mucky greys as well so it's not just a sharp brown edge and I've given the entire inspection pit a kind of varied tone of the 32, 62 and weathered concrete mix just to kind of vary it um, give the impression of you know, people have been standing in a particular area a bit longer um, or more often and the steps have been given a kind of grimy weather as well where people walk down them with their, their boots on and stuff and their, their equipment so I kind of got a, tried to get a varied tone there I've, as you see there I've kind of masked off the um, arc welder um, LED while I was doing that I don't want to coat that in too much of the if you'd like to know how I put lights in the inspection pit check out the link at the top of the screen I previously did a video on that all the LEDs are wired in parallel which increases the amount of wiring required however if one was to blow the rest would not go out so I wouldn't have to tear up the whole thing to replace um, the LED it can still operate if one 
two, three, four, how many ever LEDs are actually out. A new kit from Scale Model Scenery that I'd like to highlight to you this week is this a modern line side signage kit and it's S017-00 and what these are printed on is tear proof paper and on the back it's actually grey so you, you actually get in the kit um, the very thin plastic stems if you like or poles to put in the ground and attach these straight onto it so it requires nothing more than that they are printed and then they're kind of etched round so they just basically pop out as you can see here I've done that with the 75 and what you end up with is a crisp perfectly round um, with an even red band round the side of it which is always difficult to cut a curve with a pair of scissors especially if you're trying to get a perfect circle I mean I've uh, made my own ones up in the past and well that's pretty good I have to admit for my uh, standard of cutting it's nothing compared to the accuracy that you're getting on this modern line side signage kit which is available now from Scale Model Scenery. I'll pop the link to this particular product in the description of the video below. Well worth the uh, expense to save the hassle of one, getting a decent quality print because these are superb and two, getting a perfect circle. The job's done for you. It's simple. If you've enjoyed me weathering down the inspection pits, at the very end of the video I'll give you a link to Everard Junction. If you check out one of his earlier videos where he had a kind of small depot area, maybe that will give you some more ideas as well. If you've liked this video please click on the like icon below and if you've not already subscribed to the Dean Park channel, click on the subscribe button. There's a small icon at the bottom right hand side of the screen that'll let you access my channel where you'll have access to previously uploaded videos how-tos, running sessions, real train footage and layout updates. Hope you enjoy watching. Any comments please get in touch. Cheers just now.